I hope everything is good. You're able to hear me well. Can you please let's let me know in the comment section in the chat below, and then we can get started. Yes. Hello, Stefan. Hello, Harry. Hi. Thanks for joining. Hi, Techlead Automation. You have been joining us for a long time, and yeah, thanks for joining us. So yes, this is my first time on Code Life, and I'm. setting up with the stream and everything and yeah hopefully it should be good so if you haven't like we haven't met before if you haven't seen me before uh yeah i'm akshita samant i'm working as a developer advocate at salesforce uh i have been passionate about microsoft and i have been working in like microsoft community for a long time almost 5 plus years now and yeah so today in the stream we are going to have a special guest jitendra bafna who is a microsoft MVP. Okay, I I get comments like yeah, you sound a little soft, but we can hear you. Is it is it fine now? Uh, is my volume okay? Uh, I hope it's good. Cool. Thank you. Great. So uh yeah, we are going to have where was I? I was yeah. So we are going to have Chitendra Bapna today, who is the MuleSoft ambassador, and he has been working in the MuleSoft ecosystem for a long time, like. he has been uh, he has been a mules of ambassador as i said he also has a youtube channel and is super popular if you are someone who's learning mules of or getting started with mules of i'm sure you must have come across his youtube videos they are they are super good super useful so let us bring in jitendra bafna and hear from him what he has to bring us okay hello hi jitendra uh we are not able to hear you can you just check your settings like uh yeah hi akshita Yes, now it's great. Thank you. I, I'm sure we all are we are all like onboarding on this new platform, and yeah, I'm gonna. I'm sure it's gonna be good. How are you? How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing fine. So it must be late for you, right? You're currently in India, and then it's after work. Yeah, it's ten thirty actually. Yeah. Okay. But I'm no. I I know. I mean, I've been working with you for a long time, and I know how your work schedules are. They're always like late nights. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, it's a bit busy, like you know. So it's not only about work schedule. So doing mm -hmm. many other things uh, in the parallel. So it takes uh, it 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 consuming lot of my bandwidth also. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You are super popular, super busy. We all know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we also have a global audience. I can see many of them. They're joining from USA, Italy, um, and yeah, there's so many different peak, uh, different countries, different continents. Yeah, across globe. Cool. So, uh, can you tell us more about yourself, your professional experience, your yeah. Microsoft experience, and sure, yeah. So, like, uh, as a, like, my name is Jitendra Bafna, and like, lot of people knows me by name Jackie also. Yes. So I have like I have over fifteen years of experience in the APIs and the integration uh, technology, and I'm a Microsoft ambassador from last three four years, and I'm a Microsoft speaker and Microsoft meetup organizer. and i'm doing lot of participation to the mules of community and currently i am working as a senior solution architect at a epm systems basically and like i have a uh, like a great experience in designing uh, any point platform which include cloud up cloud up 2.0 rtf flex gateway like hybrid uh, hybrid implementation or customer hosted mule run time then apart from that like i have a great expertise in uh, integrating various system with salesforce net shorts like databases and many other erp or crm systems basically yeah oh, and yeah. that's all about me <laughs> yeah basically you have experience about everything when it comes to integration world i would say <laughs> yeah so, yeah that's why i'm like super forward i mean super excited to look forward for the session and today in the session we are going to learn mainly about the batch processing basically processing large chunks of data using batch bulk and uh, the different salesforce connectors right right cool So, is there anything else you want to talk about our session? And I'll just hand it over to you. Like we can get started. You can share your screen. Sure. So I will just share my screen. I already sharing, right? Yeah, you're already. I can just share again. Yeah. Cool. Uh, can you point to the any points too? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so like, uh, let me go through agenda. What we will going to do today? Yeah. So like, uh, we will going to see a basic uh, operation provided by the Salesforce. we will going to see a batch processing how to do the calculation for the block size so which is very important when we are doing uh, when we are processing large amount of data when you have to keep a larger block size and when you have to keep 
you know uh, shorter block size basically so we will going to discuss on that part also then afterwards like we will also discuss about uh, bulk api version 2 uh, provided by the salesforce so these are the agenda for today's session and this like we will going to discuss everything uh, like uh, everything with a practical example everything with the demonstration we will write all the all the codes and everything uh, live basically okay so the that first yeah. great yeah cool so, so let me going ahead with yeah just one question like before going ahead with batch like do you want to explain like what is what are the different techniques do we have like for batch processing or basically for operating large volumes of data see like uh, MuleSoft have some kind of uh, capability where you can do extract transform on load basically so like when you want to like uh, when you want to process the data in the batch right so MuleSoft provide like for each is also there like you can do some kind of you uh, know uh like uh, like batch processing or like you can process the data in the batch using for each or the parallel for each but you know batch processing more convenient way because like uh, it provide all the capabilities which you require for doing the batch processing basically like you can define like how many uh how, like how to process the data like uh, in like you can define like in how many batches you have to process the data what should be the best size right you can you can effectively handle you can effectively do the error handling also right so you can define like up like let consider three record fails so my and my batch should stop basically so batch contain like batch job under batch job you can have a multiple batch step in each batch step you can define your own workflows basically like in one batch step you can define something like you know just uh just get retrieve the record from one system and just send it to other system maybe to the sales force you may have a second best step where like if some uh, some record got failed in the best step one you can send it to the best step two where it will do the you know er it will take care of error handling this particular record failed what i have to do with this particular record right then finally once the batch is completed it will give you a complete result like you know how many record has been successfully processed how many record has been failed like those kind of report is already generated right so that's a that is the advantage coming with the batch processing but if you see for each uh, or parallel for each we don't get such kind of report like we don't have a control on the batch size or anything like you know here we we can like and we don't have a control on like you know uh like uh how to do the how to process the failed uh messages you have to define all the logic there like you know you have to you have to like you have to make use of try catch block you have to make use of on error uh, on error a propagate all, all kind of like you have to define your own error handlers but with best processing like if some record get failed it can send it to next best step so where you can like either you can just you know uh, send that uh, uh, send a notification or maybe you can just send that particular record to some other uh, system where you can like you know where you can handle that particular record yeah okay cool. so i guess we can start with our demo our live codes sure so the first demo, I will take a simple demo. So where like we will going to process a uh, hundred record of the Salesforce one by one, basically. So I will use the account as an object. So let me go to Salesforce instance, basically. So we have something called, uh, I will go to object manager, mm -hmm. right? So we have something called account. So these are the objects available in the Salesforce. So basically account object contain the information about your you know your partners or maybe like customers those kind of things so so let me uh what i will do i will going to insert a data in this particular account object and we will going to use the batch processing right so first thing what we have to do we have to define the connections basically so i already defined the connection here so it support uh multi uh, multiple types of authentication basic authentication OAuth version 2.0 or jwt or username and password or saml basic these are the five authentication methods supported by Salesforce connector. Basically, I will just use the basic authentication uh, for basic authentication. You just have to provide Salesforce username, Salesforce password, security token. So once you create the account, you receive the security token and you have to provide the authorization URL. And this is the host name like, you know, so I'm using the version 55 API and this is my host name basically. Okay. I will just do the test connection. Okay, test was successful. I will just say okay. Let me delete this one also. So what I will do, uh, I will just uh, like uh, I have a small folder here. So I will just open the file. So I have just hundred record file basically. 
this have 100 required like it will going to add name and the phone number to the account uh, object in the salesforce uh, it's just a simple file so and it will be adding one by one basically okay so this is the file what i will do i will drop to one of the uh, location so i have created one location here so i will drop to a uh, file to this particular location as soon as i drop to this particular location the flow will get triggered and it will start processing so what for that i will use the operation called on new file so whenever it will see any new file on that particular folder it will pick okay and what i will do i have to define some configuration here it's just a simple example later we will go with some complex scenarios also so i will just simply can give a directory path so this is my directory c salesforce selects and then after it after it read the file i have to delete it from the source basically so i will just say auto delete true that's it so that's a that is how you just uh, have to configure the file uh, uh, this new file update operation so this is the listener for now it will be listening to that particular folder whenever this particular listener will see the file in that particular folder it will pick that file it will send for further processing and it will delete the file from that particular folder the next thing now as soon as i receive the file i will just put one logger and i will say a processing started then i will use the bad job so we have something called bad job okay so you, you can see this is my bad job under bad job uh, you can see the default block size is 100 i am going to discuss on that particular part also so like currently what will happen if i put 100 record so it will create 100 block so what happens uh, i will just do some calculation here i will show you so if i define 100 block size right so it will it will like that number of record divided by block size like you know so sorry uh, so is equal to one so each block will have a one record basically like you know so it will create 100 block and and each block will have a one record okay so that is how it does so it it, it is not good practice like you know if in, within each block you produces one record that is not a good practice but let's see like you know how uh, we will improve on that particular part let's first start with the 100 block size then i will use the transform message before i put a message into bad job i have to serialize the message basically okay so i will just say java and just have to say payload it will serialize the message right and now i will use one more transform message right so basically the salesforce connector uh, input is the array basically right so it should be in java only it should be array so i will just say uh, square bracket payload that's it then i will go with salesforce so salesforce connector provide a lot of operation basically like you have a create operation you have a close job batch result like you have a bulk api operations also you have a delete operation you have a lot of uh, operations within salesforce like you know you can see also the on modify object on delete there are n number of operations provided by the Salesforce connector. You can see that like there are n number of operations. But for now, I will use the create operation. So create operation will going to create a record in that object, basically object in the Salesforce. So for now, we are using account as our object. It will going to create a record in the account object. So I will just drag and drop create here. Okay. So if you see, I will just refresh it. So I want so it will populate all the metadata because i already given the connection string so i already configure my connection string in this particular location you can see that in the global elements right so at the start of this particular session and i have to select the object as an account that's it now this will give us some kind of uh, response back so what i will do i will use another transform message or i will not going to use the transform message i will copy this particular code and i will simply use the logger on in the logger and just open this and i will just uh, so i'm just so whatever response we are getting right so we i want to see that particular response i want to show you one more thing like what are, what is the one good thing about the salesforce connector if i uh, drag and drop here you will see the it will automatically generate the metadata for you so what is the expected output you can see it here basically what are the things you can get it in the expected output you, will, you can see it here like you know it generate once the connection has been successful right it will automatically generate the metadata for you you can see that these are the 
this is a particular response we are going to get from the sales force basically okay i will for now i will just remove this like i will just save everything apart from that like i want to do one more thing so i will just set one variable at the start of this uh, or maybe after logger and this set variable like uh, i just want to say start type so when this job was started then also i will say now that's it then we have some something called on complete stage after everything has been happen it will come to on complete stage and it will give how many record has been successful how many record has been failed and also i want how much time it taken to complete this particular batch job right so what i will do uh, i can use logger okay i can just say fx uh, expression then i can say now minus vars dot at time that's it right okay so save everything and run it and also let me open the account object uh, in the salesforce So here is my account object. So let me see all accounts. It should have a thirteen records, I think, or twelve. Yeah, we we have a thirteen records, okay, in the account object. So let's wait. Uh, I want to check whether my pro batch process has been started. Okay. The job has uh, started. You can say it has been successfully deployed, and I will just clear the screen. What I will do? I will going to place a file with a hundred records. Let me do that. I will just copy the file with a hundred record here, and I will go to that particular Salesforce folder. Paste it. See, we start getting the response, right? and let's see what happening in the sales force also i'll just refresh it you can see these are the records which start getting added like you know i have, you you should notice one thing it is taking a lot of time right for just inserting 100 record because it is done one by one and because uh, the other problem is that uh, we have defined the block size right so it will create 100 block right and like and each block will have a one record so that is not a good thing right so let's see like after the after this uh, once this is completed we will reduce the block size to 10 or something like that and let's see what happens see i will give one uh, tip for the block size when you have a million of record try to keep the block size higher maybe 500 600 or maybe like try to process 1000 messages in the one block right so and also depend like how many v cores or how many memory you have allocated to your uh, to your application basically that also matters so like okay so it's completed and let me see how much time it took so if you see it took uh, around uh, 1 minute 10 seconds to complete this complete process basically right right and let me check uh, all accounts here let me refresh it should have 113 records it, it will have 113 records so you see 91 yeah it's almost yeah 99 which is good it start from 0 and it goes to 99 which is good so we have 100 record let me remove this particular records like you know i want to show you uh, in other way like with a, a smaller best size so uh, salesforce provides some capability called mass delete i can use directly this but snaps or directly this gui and I will say mass delete accounts. And here I can put the filter account name, uh, or I will say contain uh, PJ. And I will just say search. See, I'm why I'm deleting because I don't have too much space here. 
uh, right? It's a developer account. I will just delete. Okay, this is good. I have deleted this. Now what I will do, let's reduce the base size. So I will go here. I will just say 10. Just And you can see the response also. Like now I will show you more responses. And also what happened in this particular scenario, if you are processing uh, one by one, right? So like for, for sending 100 uh, messages, it create a 100 time connection with the sales force. We are going to see that approach also, how we can reduce the number of round trip to the sales force basically, or how we can reduce the number of connection to the sales force. So right now I have deployed this application. Okay, why this particular application? It has picked up. No, this was old. Let me paste it. Okay, it has been picked up. It will be more faster. You can see it on the screen. Like it is a more faster, right? Okay, so let's see. It completed in the 13 second, like 13 second only. Last time it took one minute, 16 second. Now it is completed in the 13 second. So what happened? If you have a number of record are less, always go with a smaller block size. If you have a millions of record, always go with a higher block size, right? So, so basically, I, I will suggest like generally I keep like I process around 500 to 1000, maybe sometimes 2000 record in one block. I never go more than that basically. Okay. So this is one. Now the now our problem is that it is still making lot of connection to the sales force basically. If you can see. It is doing a lot of connections, right? So like uh, for processing 100 record, it is connecting to the sales for, for the 100 times. But how can I reduce this particular uh, round trip to the sales force? How can I reduce this number of connections? Uh, you know, uh, I, I, how, I, how, I, how can I reduce the number of connections basically? Okay. So for that, again, I will go back to my sales force. I will, sorry, I have to delete it again. It doesn't take much of the time, it's just 100 record. So now I will use the file with the 300 records. Okay, I have one file that having the 300 records. You can see this particular file. Okay, this have some 300 records. I will use that file. Before that, I have to do some changes. So MuleSoft provides some capability called uh, aggregator. So there is a something called batch aggregator. So I can go to batch aggregator and here I can say, I want to process message in the size of 300 basically, right? And I can move this create record inside this and this inside this. And I don't want to try, I think I don't want transform message also because batch aggregator will automatically create array of the record basically. So I just move the operations uh, into the batch aggregator. Here I give the best size of 300 and the logger right now logger it will just print the output okay which uh, we got from this create record let me save once i will save it it will redeploy the application hello i'm back so while it's redeploying we also have a few questions should we take it now or should we take it yeah we can take it yeah, yeah. so uh there's just few uh, i mean we were discussing this yesterday as well. The data, um, the toolkit, and the data flow, uh, right? Mm -hmm. So we, uh, so uh, let me pop up the question. Okay. So here it is. We can do the same thing with CRM analytics toolkit and data flow. So why do we need MuleSoft? And then the next question is also the same. Like, what is the benefit of using MuleSoft when we can do something similar with data loader? Yeah, see, I, see I, what, why I will suggest like Mule. So if you want to write any business logic, like, you know, heavily here, I'm just showing a simple scenario, but in real life, you will get to see like you, you will get a data where you have to just do the data cleaning and everything like you, you may have to apply some kind of business logic around those data, right? So we, at, so we will require a mule saw to apply such kind of logic. I think with data loader, we can just migrate or we can just broadcast or we, uh, data from one look from one system to another system basically or we can do some kind of ma mapping also but not more than that like if you want to define some kind of 
like business process, business logic, or if you want to change some kind of like you know input uh, parameters, right? So maybe like uh, if one field is coming, like uh, uh, like first name and last name is coming, right? And if you want to send that in, as a name, a single name, we have to call, we have to just add those string, right? It is just a simple example, right? So in such cases, we have to go with the mule sort. If you want to write some kind of data cleaning, uh, if you want to add some kind of filter to our data. Yeah. right in such cases we have to go with a mule sort basically i don't think data loader provides a, it will just do the data migration basically yeah. one from one system to another system it's just going to be like an etl but if you need a holistic approach if you are working with apis there are multiple end systems then mule sort is the option for you and it's the best option cool so right. let's go back to our okay. screen I okay it's so yeah, it's it is deployed let me go with the 300 files. So I have data with the 300 messages. Okay. I will just put, let me go to Salesforce. It has been picked up. It should throw the error. Yes, it should. This is right. I am 100% sure it's a data exceeded. Yeah. So has match, uh, has a reached the max allowed number of failed records. Because when you are using the create operation, you can only send an array of 200 records, not more than that. Right now, this is the limitation with this particular operation. This is the limitation with this, this particular Salesforce API. Or it's I will rather I will not call it a limitation. It's a like it's a requirement, some kind of like no, it just support. Uh, you can just send 200 records at a time, basically. So in such cases, we have like I am passing the 300 records, right? So it will try to send 300 record in one batch, right? Which is not allowed for this particular operation. So maybe we have to change this size to 200. Okay. So now it will create uh, two connections with the Salesforce. The because we we are sending 300 record. So for first uh, like for first batch it will send 200 record. For second batch it will send 100 record. And that is allowed limit basically at the Salesforce side also, right? Let me save this. I will, I will come to how to solve this problem also. We will come to that part also. No worries about that. So we have something called where we can process like uh, millions of records also. I'm just saving it. Okay, this is good. Let me copy the file again. See, it is like it is completed also. Like if you see, we got the response in the array itself, right? You can see it. Like we got an error of response, like you know, and it is completed also. And how much time it took? It just took a three seconds. Like you can see, like initially when we have done uh, record processing one by one with a higher block size, it took like one minute and sixteen seconds. Later we have removed the reduced the block size to ten, right? It took sixteen to seventeen seconds, I think. Right. And now we started using the aggregation. Right. It took three seconds, basically. So you can see, like, uh, if you are using this best processing in effective way, right, you can reduce the time also. So for for block size, what I will suggest, I will I will, I will uh, explain one example here, a good example here. So what I will suggest, like, if you have a less number of records, right, so always go with a lower block size. Like, just try to keep uh, 500 or 600 record minimum in one block, right? If you have a, like a million of record, like if you want to process 5 million record or 6 million record, I will suggest try to keep higher block size, try to keep 1000 record or maybe a bit more, uh, more record in one block basically. So generally you can, uh, you can generally so like, like derive a right block size by doing the testing. You may have to do some kind of testing to come up with a uh, right block size. I will tell you why. Let me. I I have an Excel sheet. If I have it here somewhere, yeah. I have done some kind of analysis for you. Like, let me show you. So what I've done. So I, first, what I've done. Like, I have a five hundred thousand record. I just kept a block size ten, right? So it means like there will be a five thousand record in one block. So it took around fourteen point four minutes to process all this particular record. Right. Then I have same number of record. I just increase the block size to 50. So it means 10,000 records will be processed in the one block, basically. Right. It took 3.3 minutes. Like you can see, like, you know, I just increase the block size 
and the time has been reduced at almost 300 or 400 maybe 400 percent right you know then you can see like again five lakh i just increase the block size to 100 and then the processing 5000 record 2.5 then I increase the like a block size to five, but here you cannot see a major difference, right? 2.5, 2.4, 2.4 basically. So either you can like for processing five like record, I will suggest the hundred is the best block size for this particular scenario, basically, right? This may change like if your payload is uh, payload having like you know uh, payload is uh, like around more KB, right? It, it like this consider payload is one KB here, right? So that's why taking lesser, uh, it's taking less time. Maybe your payload is around 10 KB. It may take more time so you have to do some kind of testing you have to test with the different different block size then you can determine what is the right block size for your scenario or for your use case right so this is the analysis i have done i just want to showcase like how we can define a correct block size for your payloads or for your files or for your like you know data basically and it also varies from like if you have a like data transformation or if you have some heavy logic you know so that like that time may increase or decrease it depend on like uh, payload size like volume of data what kind of block size you are defining like like apart from what is the size of your data and like you know what kind of transformation logic you have in your code you no know, it depend on lot of factor you need to test it and like then you can determine a right block size so block size is a very important when you are processing large amount of data so now we have seen one issue here, like when I'm processing uh, 300 record with this particular Salesforce connector, right? I'm getting the number of record exceeded, right? So this is a limitation with this create operation, basically. And even query, query operation, it will just retrieve 200 records, not more than that. So what is the solution for that? So Salesforce have come up with something called a bulk API. So here you can see in bulk API, you can process like, uh, I think 100,000 record per day, basically, and it doesn't matter how many record you are sending in one batch, basically. So, and apart from that, you don't have to write any uh, logic where you have to just, you know, just send 10, 10, 10 records to the sales. It, 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 it should not be like that. You simply send all the data to the Salesforce. Salesforce will be take care of all your data. Let me come up with that particular example also. Before I go into that particular example, uh, let me go back to my. I have to do some data cleaning. Sorry for that. Yeah, it's there. It will not take more time. I think it have a... Yeah, it's clean. just 100, 300 record. So it doesn't took much of the time. So what I will do, I will just remove this on new update. I will I will going to share this code with you. Okay. So let me come up with something called a new uh, process. So I will just use like on new file update again. I will use the same path only. But here I will not going to use the batch processing. There is a no need of using the batch processing when you are using the bulk API. I will just say true. Okay. So this is new file updated. As soon as it will see the file, it will start processing. Now, the one of the requirement for this bulk API, your file name, your file should be CSV. And whatever field name, like you have defined in your CSV, it should be matched with a Salesforce object, like field name in the Salesforce object, basically, right? So that so you don't have to do any data transformation, and Salesforce doesn't have to do any kind of data transformation. So I will show you that file, the file which I have created, this name and phone, this is matching, exactly matching with the uh, field name in the Salesforce account object. And it should be in the CSV format also. And now you may have a question, what about Excel, if data is coming in Excel or if data is coming in any other format, you have in news of provide the capability where you can do the transform, right? Yeah, from Excel to maybe CSV or maybe from any other format to CSV, it is possible. Like it can be easily done uh, with a, with a transform message or data wave. Okay. So let me open, go with the bulk API. So bulk API have a two version. So bulk API version two and bulk API version. So it, but you, you cannot see the version uh, one here because version one have a lot of limitations where like uh, you have to do the heavy lifting. You have to define all the logic. You have to define the batching like, you know, so you can, you have to just take care of sending 10, 10,000 messages to the sales pool. Here we don't have to worry. We have to simply send the messages. 
no business logic, nothing like this. Once you have created a proper CSV file with all the fields name and everything, you don't have to write any business logic, anything. You don't have to do any kind of batching, nothing like, you know, you don't have to worry. You simply load that file in single connection. You load that file to the Salesforce. Rest of the thing will be taken care by the Salesforce. I will going to show that also. So for, I want to use a create job bulk API. So I want to create an object basically, right? I want to create accounts. So here you have to select the account. Uh, the connection string automatically comes, which I have defined in the global element. Now you have to define line ending, whether it's CRLF or LF. In my case, it's CRLF. And what is the operation? It should be the insert. I want to insert the data, right? And apart from that, like simple, like you just have to say line ending. So in my case, the line ending is CRLF and column del delimiter is comma. So you, like you can have other column delimiter also. For now, I'm just keeping comma. And because my C I have a CSV file which is comma separated, I will simply save, I'll save it. I will keep saving. Then I will use a transform message, or I can simply use the logger. I will copy the data from the logger. This code, and I will simply use the logger here. So whatever response coming, I want to show you something like you know, transform message. I want to show the neat metadata. So what response you can expect. So see here, it will generate this particular kind of uh, payload. The important thing, this ID, this is the batch ID, or you can call this as a job ID, then state. So these two things are very important. So what, where is state? Yeah, state. So once you upload the data, so like, you know, the first state will be the, uh, like upload complete. Once you upload it, it will become in progress, right? And either if, they, if there's any failure, it, the state will be failed or like uh, if successfully completed, it will say job complete basically, right? So these are the four state uh, like you can, like you will get in the response basically, okay? Job complete, upload complete, in progress and failed, okay? So I just remove this transformations. I just I go to logger FX right here. Okay, I'll, it's simple like i don't have to create a bigger job see create job i just create the operation i just done some configuration like what is the file separator what is like line ending uh, sorry what is the column separator what is line ending what is operation what is the objective simple right and even i haven't done the transformation because the file which i got we are like that is matching the column name and everything with the salesforce in case the column name is not matching you can do the transform message here for changing the column uh, name right save it once i will save it it should run the job aksara do we have a 10 15 more minutes right it's fine right uh yeah we do have time no worries we just have few questions if you want to take them yeah, I will take it. Let me finish this demo. Yeah, we can okay. do it later. Yeah, I'll just let you know whenever we have like 10 minutes before. Okay, so I just the job is running. Let me go back to my file. So what file should I pick it? I will pick the 300 record file again. Just upload here. It has been picked up and you got the response. So what is the response state in progress, right? Now I want to check uh, like what is the state, like, you know, uh, what is the state, like whether it is completed or not. So there's a two way, copy this ID. Okay. And go back to Salesforce. I will just remove all this line and just paste the ID here. And here you can see uh, it has created the job batch. Of 300, I've sent the 300. There is a no failure. It is completed. Like, is there any way I can bring this data basically, you know, uh, like automatically? Yeah, it's there is a way I will going to show you how can you do that. So for now, you can see that like, you know, so you have a uh, 300 record has been processed successfully. Let me use my, let me query that data, whether I have received that data. Yeah, you can see that, that all 300 data is available here, right? So it's all. So it have added all the data basically very quickly. So like here you don't have done any logic. Like if you see the previous uh, thing, 
where you have to define all this aggregation, batch step, like everything, like transfer. You have to serialize the data. A lot of things you have done here, right? Here you just have the you have defined the operation, right? And just a logger is like if you want to implement logger, then you can do it. If you don't want to implement, that's fine. Like you know, so you simply just uh, create a batch job in the Salesforce. The rest of the thing will be taken care by the Salesforce basically, right? So here you can see. If you want to see it uh, programmatically, I'm going to show you how can you do that. Uh, how can you get the state like the status uh, from the Salesforce using the mule shop flows? I'm going to showcase that also. That is one one demonstration. So let's say these are the 300 record has been quickly added. Like you haven't took the time also, right? So you you can see they start at 11:09 and it ended at 11:09. It it took a milliseconds to process this 300 record. Like previously, if you see, it took four five seconds. Now it took milliseconds, right? So very fast. Okay, and let me go back to my mass delete. I'm just saving the space because it's a developer account. So we get a less space. Oh, okay. Good. So it is deleted. Now the next demo, we will going to process 11,000 record now. Okay. So before that, what I will do, I will use one set variable. Yeah, and in set variable, what I will do, I will just uh, copy job ID. I want to take a job ID, so I can take it from payload dot ID. You can see the metadata is automatically generated. Now, now what I have to do, I will use until successful. Okay. Here I will use until successful. So what I will do. Till I am getting the in progress, right? I will just keep on running this until successful, basically, right? So let me do that. So un under that, I will use the choice router. Like before choice router, I have to get the status, right? So what I will do, bulk, bulk uh, API, I will search for bulk API. Bulk job state, can you see it here? Create bulk. Uh, API, I would create, create, create. Yeah, this is the job state, right? So I want to get a job state every time, like it got filled. So the job state, a particular required one job ID. So I have already saved a job ID, which I got it uh, after creating the uh, creating a job in the Salesforce. I got that ID. I saved this in variable, and now I just simply pass it this as a vars dot job id that's it now here what i will do i will go back to my back code source code basically and simply i will copy this when i want to when go back to message flow so here what i will say i will say payload dot state is equal to equal to job complete then it's fine, right? So it successfully processes. So I will say logger. Right? Let me copy like data from logger better. Just copy, I don't have to write it again. Just printing the output, okay. and there might be state where you get a failed record. Payload dot state is equals to equals to failed. Then again, I will use the same logger component. Now, in case if it's default, right? So what I will do, I will raise the error so it can execute the until successful. So like if I getting other state than job complete or failed, right? I have to raise the error so it can run the uh, like, you know, until successful basically. So what I will say, uh, accounts.
beta fit. Okay. So this is just the error I'm defining, raise error. Right. Uh, before raise error, I'll always put a logger component. Just save it. Hopefully, it will work. And this time, we will going to process eleven thousand record. So I have a file with eleven thousand record. Uh, like uh, I also want ID for this. That's fine. I will get it and from this logger. So this has been run it. I will take 11,000 record file and copy. Okay. I just done one mistake here uh, until successful. So 5,000 retry 60. Uh, I think it should be fine. Paste it. Yeah, it is saying error because it's in progress, right? So as soon as in progress, it goes to this particular component, it will raise the error, it will come to until successful. Right after one minute, it will again try. If it is in, prog in progress, again go to until success, it will try for retry for the five times basically. Let me show this. I will copy this ID. Let me go to Salesforce. And here you will see it will create a two batch or two batches of 10,000 and 1,000. See, it is successfully processed, it's completed here. So you can see it created, it will process record of in the batch of 10,000. So you don't have to do this split, right? It automatically done by the Salesforce. You simply send the 11,000 record to Salesforce and Salesforce will automatically take care of that. Now let's see. See, we got a success, like everything is successful. Now the job, job has been completed. You can see job complete. So now it came to this particular state and it came out basically, right? So it has been successfully processed. Like if you want to see uh, like uh, mass delete, this time I will not going to delete because it will take years to delete it, right? No, <laughs> it's 11,000 record. So you can see a lot of records has been like, research it. It should come. Okay, I think uh, it's not P jack. Let me check. Something else like okay, it's jack only. I think it will remove this. Search it. Here yeah, you can see the lot of records. It's there. So on one one display you can see just 20 uh, 250 records, but you can see all 10,000 record because uh, has been inserted, and you even you can see on this particular screen like no record has been filled. Everything has been successfully completed. Uh, before I take question, I want to show you last thing, how you can query this data, basically, right? So, uh, like, when you do the uh, select query, right, you can just select around uh, 200 record. If you want to select the record in bulk, what you will do, right? So, there is a bulk query object also, bulk query create query job, right? So, you simply click here So query, query job, like what are the things you need to pass? You have to pass a query first, right? So I will simply say select name. its name, comma, phone from account object. That's it. I will submit this job. Before that, I want a logger component, right? And I just copy this very quickly. It's simple. And here I either I can use HTTP listener for executing this HTTP listener. 
I'll just say okay. I say query. That's it. Okay. Console files here. It's a simple operation. Create query job. It will going to create a query job basically. And there are other to retrieve a query result also. Get query job result. I will going to showcase that also. I have to send a HTTP request. HTTP localhost HTTP eighty one slash it what I have given. It will not, it already, yeah, you can see the record upload complete, right? I will copy this ID and how many record it has been retrieved. Let's see. It should retrieve 11,013 records. Yeah, it should retrieve 11,013 records, right? Everything is successful. Now I want to read that record. How can I do that? Okay. So I have this, let me copy this ID. So you can do automated also, but I'm just showing it quickly. So there is other operation, once for creating a, a job, another for reading a record from that particular job. So create, I have a get query job info, not get query job result. Yeah. Right. And I will just pass this as a attributes dot query params. It's a job. Attributes dot your current job ID. That's fine. Uh, you can de uh, define the pay, uh, size also. So try to keep like you know maximum size because it is try to use it will going to store everything in the memory. And here I will just say HTTP listener again. Everything will remain same. I will just say report. Then I can use transform message or simply JSON. It will generate CSV, but I will transform to the JSON. And finally, I will do login. Let me save it quickly. I think I have saved the job ID. So I quickly I go back to my HTTP local host. I will just change to report and I will just say job ID is equals to let me get to start it. See, it start reading the record, right? It already read all the records very quickly, like you know. So you can see that I just logged it, so it had read all the records. So that is how you can perform a bulk query also. So it is very useful when you want to just uh, export or input data from one system to another, basically, right? Yeah. So, so like uh, Aksada, like I have completed with demo, right? Any Ooh. question, like you know? That was that was really amazing and super helpful for me as well. Like there's so much to learn. Yeah, so yeah. we do have few questions, but uh, Megesh Shana has been helping us a lot. Thank you, Megesh. So uh, it was mainly like, when do we, when should we use Heroku and MuleSoft, and like if we can do the same thing with MuleSoft, uh, with the with Heroku. I don't. Think I, I'm not aware. Like really speaking, I'm not aware of Heroku. Like you Heroku, know. Yeah. So yeah, so, if you want, I mean, like. Yeah, so I have actually used it once before, uh, but it's more like a platform. I mean, it's a platform as a service kind of. We can just uh, build application. We can host applications. But with MuleSoft, you can do like so much more. You can actually manage the entire API lifecycle. You have whole set of connectors available. And it's not just about Salesforce that we're talking about. You could be having different end system, different legacy systems. And I mean, so much more. Like you can actually build an entire composable reusable infrastructure with MuleSoft so there's I mean when it comes to integration there is so much more you can do with MuleSoft and with the automation suit there are like more capabilities which have been like unfolding so I, I would say that's a bit different comparison we cannot compare Heroku and MuleSoft that they are the two yeah. different things for different purpose right yeah 
I, I, I will tell about MuleSwap, like MuleSwap provide almost everything, like, everything. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, like you can talk about integration, you can talk about API, you can talk about extract transform load, you can talk about best processing, like bulk uh, processing large volume of data. And like, it, it, this is from application capability, also from platform side, it provide everything. Like you, you see cloud of cloud of 2.0, like any point platform API mm -hmm. manager, then flex gateway, maybe like runtime fabric manager. So there are, it's multiple options available to host your application, like, you know. Yeah, no, that's so true. So um, apart from this, is there anything else? Like, yeah, we just got one more question as well. Like, how is it different from other middleware tools, Jitterbit, Zapier, etc.? I see like uh, one, you one, have been one working thing with like, almost different, like you have been working with different integration tool, right? Over the past few years, how would yeah. you, I mean, from your perspective, how would you say how MuleSoft is different? Because as a developer advocate, I can actually go on speaking about MuleSoft for the entire day, but like, yeah, what would you like to yeah. say? See, I will, see, I will not compare these tools basically, but I can talk about MuleSoft basically, yeah. right? So if you see like uh, MuleSoft is a bit versatile, like it provides uh, multiple capabilities. Like somebody, uh, some customer came to me and he's saying like, I want to host my application in private data center, right? You have options in MuleSoft. Somebody will say like, I want to host application in the managed services. You have a cloud hub, you have a cloud hub 2.0. Somebody will say like, I want to host my application in the container based environment. You have a runtime fabric manager, right? So th that is from the platform perspective. Apart from that, if you see from MuleSoft perspective, it have, it have a n number of connector, like 400 plus connector. You can connect any system anywhere, like, you know, at any time, basically, right? Apart from that, like, it, it provide, uh, provide a great API capabilities. It also provide a great ETL capability, batch processing capability. We have seen, like, how easily we can handle large amount of data, right? right? If, you, if you are configuring all the parameters correctly, I haven't talked about the streaming yet, right? So streaming can also improve the performance for your processing large amount of data. We don't have a time. Next time we will talk about the streaming also. So like you can see if you are configuring your job properly with proper size and everything properly, right? You are leveraging a proper operations for the connector basically, right? Then you can simply, you know, like process a large amount of data within, within like, you know, seconds or within the minutes, basically. It will not take hours also. Yeah, that, that's so true. And to end this session, I think we are almost done with all the chat question answers. And then it was it was really great. I enjoyed that thoroughly. And Thank apart you. from that, like, um, yeah, we, we do have this Q and, um, QR code. If you want to join, if you have any further queries about MuleSoft, you can just join this Trailblazer Community MuleSoft group wherein you can ask or post all your questions. If there are any updates, you'll find them here. Um, and yes, there'll be, we can, we can we'll be definitely looking forward to seeing you at the next stream, the next code live, which is next Thursday at the same time. And it's going to be by Felipe. It's about uh, decoupling and dependency injection with Apex. So stay tuned for the next code live. And thank you so much, Jitendra. Thank you for Thanks joining us. Time. Thanks for. Uh, yeah, so we have the QR code here and you can join the group and see you guys next time with another topic, another interesting uh, guest. Or maybe it could be me doing some demo session for you guys. So yeah, that's all for the day. Thank you.